Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Australia's fossil record is the patchiest of all the continents, a fact that holds true both for Alter Earth and for our own universe. Therefore, for the entirety of the Cenozoic, paleontologists working on Alter Earth have had access to only three fossil sites, Mergon from the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, Riversley from the Late Oligocene slash Early Miocene, and the Narracourt Caves from the Plio-Pleistocene. As frustrating as this is, we must accept that our understanding of Cenozoic Australian fossil records is much poorer than that of other continents. However, I will set out all of the information that we do have, beginning with this article on the early Eocene Mergon site. Located in Queensland, northeastern Australia, the Mergon site contains the remains of animals that lived during the balmy Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. From the little that has been recovered from the site, we can infer that the region possessed a warm, swampy, forested environment with patterns of seasonal dryness. The few animals found here are known from very fragmentary remains, but the presence of theropod dinosaurs, ornithischians, titanosaurs, various mammals, crocodiliforms and pterosaurs is certain. In addition, avian dinosaurs and snakes were also present. In all, these animals formed the Tingamara fauna, with many similarities to South American Eocene sites. Almost all members of the Tingamara fauna are known either from teeth, single bones, or pieces of jaw, and it is therefore difficult to place many of these animals aside from assignment to broad categories such as Titanosauria or Metatheria. I'll start by laying out a few examples, beginning with Curasuchus mergonensis. Measuring an estimated 3.5 metres in length, this fairly terrestrial crocodiloid is actually the best known animal from the Mergon fossil site. Several partial skeletons have been recovered, revealing that this animal was one of the top medium-sized predators in the region during the late Paleocene slash early Eocene. Although the skulls of these animals are quite generalised, appearing triangular when seen from above, their limbs were rather long and straight, suggesting a lifestyle somewhat similar to that of the Cuban crocodile from our Earth. Phylogenetically, Kurosuchus falls outside of Crocodilidae, being most closely related to other basal crocodiloids such as Asiatosuchus. Prey for this animal would have consisted of small ornithopods like Kingaroya and young titanosaurs. Only known from a few fossilised teeth, the tiny, shrew-sized Mergonotribos was a member of the enigmatic Australosphenida. These Gondwanan mammals have had a confusing taxonomic history, mostly due to the fact that their tribosphenic molars closely resemble those of true placentals. Indeed, some older phylogenetic studies placed them within Placentalia, therefore invalidating Australosphenida as then defined. This situation was not helped by the paucity of remains attributed to these animals and to Australia's notoriously patchy fossil record. However, Alter Earth has finally provided definitive evidence that puts this debate to rest. A single modern genus representing this group, Willy Willia, with three different species, dwells in the rainforests of northeastern Australia and Papua, living a terrestrial shrew-like existence. Willy Willia is clearly a descendant of Australosphenids, while genetic testing carried out on these living animals has proven that they are close relatives of the monotremes, and are the most basal living members of Australosphenida. Mergonotribos was also a part of this lineage, and appears to have been quite similar in size and lifestyle to its modern relative. The reconstruction shown here is therefore speculative, but from Willy Willia we know that these animals lacked beaks, possessed venomous calcneal spurs at their ankles, and were probably nocturnal. Sarcomyoid metatherians originated in South America during the Paleocene, having evolved from generalised North American ancestors. Modern sarcomyoids on South America are highly numerous small carnivores and insectivores, niches that they have filled diligently for 55 million years. They never became the dominant mammalian carnivores there, facing stiff competition from the larger, mostly arboreal Sporacodontans. On Australia, however, 
which the sarcomyoids reached during the late Paleocene via Antarctica, there was no such competition, and they quickly radiated into all sorts of carnivorous niches. In modern Australia, sarcomyoids range from weasel to raccoon-sized carnivores, not unlike the larger marsupial dasurids from our Earth. The oldest representative of this group from Australia was the early Eocene Barillidelphis, a 20 cm long carnivore known only from a partial lower jaw with several teeth attached. This animal would have preyed on frogs, lizards, and other small mammals in the warm, swampy forests of Mergon. Thanks for watching, everyone. Next week, I'll be covering the Olm, a blind, cave dwelling salamander from the Balkans. See you again soon. Cheerio.